Hey, everyone. Thank you for joining us on a DevOps Live Meetup this evening. Uh, we have a, a great presenter here that's uh, going to be showing up really soon. Uh, but I want to give everyone a heads up on a little announcement. Um, the we're having the we we had to postpone the the DevOps Days Dallas on, until next year. It was going to happen this year in August, but we've postponed it uh, due to you know the same thing everybody's happening with with the coronavirus and kind of staying staying at home, working from home, and you know we we uh, value everybody's health and don't want to jeopardize anybody into this situation. So we decided as organizers to go ahead and postpone it until uh, August of next year. But don't worry. I mean, you'll see my Twitter. That's my Twitter handle there, Mike Ross TX. Um, always follow me on Twitter or or check or follow the DevOps Live Twitter handle, which is at DevOps Live. Um, we always are posting different conferences and different meetups and different webinars that are happening online all the time. So. Um, you can get your fill up that way. So, um, but for the time being, we're going to be having these meetups every two weeks and so forth. So, um, just stay tuned, you know, to our calendar and check the next meetup. So, right now, I want to bring on uh, Aaron Mel. Aaron is with Lumen Digital, and I appreciate him coming on tonight and talking about, you know, securing applications on on. Uh, running on Kubernetes, you know, with Istio. Um, I'll let, I'm going to go ahead and drop it off. How are you doing today, Aaron? I'm doing pretty well. How about you? Doing great, doing great. So I'm going to go ahead and just drop off and I'll let Aaron do an introduction of himself and what he's been doing and and then proceed with the, the presentation and the demo. So without further ado, I'm going to leave it to Aaron here. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. So like Mike said, my name is Aaron Mel. Uh, I'm a Kubernetes lover. As you can see, I've even bought the jacket. And I use uh, Kubernetes every day to build repeatable infrastructure for our customers at Lumen Digital. We do, we're in the online banking space. We provide a white label product to credit unions. And that's the, the product that I support. So tonight, I'm gonna show you how you can use Istio to secure your applications running on, on uh, Kubernetes. Okay, so the agenda for tonight, I'm gonna to give a brief introduction to service meshes in general, talk about Istio specifically. After that, I have a demo that's gonna take up probably most of the talk that showcases the different ways that you can use Istio to help uh, secure applications running on Kubernetes. So what's a service mesh? The definition that I found on the internet at least is it's a configurable low latency network that's designed to handle high volumes of network traffic, traffic among application services. A lot of service meshes that run on Kubernetes use a similar pattern to the one that I have on the screen. And it's where you have a sidecar that sits along your microservice in, in a Kubernetes pod. And all the networking flows through the sidecar. So the microservice doesn't actually talk to anything directly. It always talks to other services and talks outside of the, of the mesh even through its sidecar. So the sidecar is a network proxy and that gives you a, a, some really great advantages uh, when using a service mesh. So as an example, you can, for one, you're gonna remove the networking concerns from your application. And as somebody that's, you know, if you're building microservices, the less you can put in your microservices, I think the better. In addition, the service mesh gives you capabilities like doing la layer seven, uh, load balancing, so application load balancing inside your application and at the gateway. It's sorry to interrupt, Aaron. It looks like the screen. I don't know if it's frozen or if you could check or kind of reshare it. Yeah, it's, it's giving me like a weird artifact. All right, let me let me try resharing. Technology is great when it works. I know it. <laughs> I think that might be better. Go ahead and continue. All right, let me see if I, well, no, when I switch, when I switch to the next slide, it just does not like that. 
Are you sharing the full screen? Uh, yeah, I am sharing the full screen. Well, let's let me try this again. We just try sharing the window and see if that's any better. Okay, let me let me bring it on. There we go. Okay. All right. It's okay. Technical difficulties aside. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so, so some other advantages of Service Mesh. It does. It helps with service discovery inside and outside of the cluster. It provides encryption between services, and it also can help with traffic control and routing. And that's probably the one piece that I won't be talking about tonight because that's like a whole. I could spend an hour probably just just talking about all the things that this does with traffic control. So the next diagram that I have here is specific to Istio, and it's uh, the architecture of Istio. So Service meshes are kind of broken down into two different pieces. You have what's called the data plane. And in Istio, the data plane is those proxies that run the, the sidecars. And those are Envoy proxies. Envoy was a product developed by Lyft. They're high performance, and they don't take up a lot of uh, resources to run. And that handles the mesh. Uh, that's the mesh. And all the traffic that flows through the mesh flows through those Envoy proxies. And that includes things like ingress and egress. So, in a traditional Kubernetes setup that doesn't have Istio, typically ingress comes in and hits something like Nginx or HA proxy, or maybe some other ingress um, tool. Not so in Istio, those don't exist in an Istio architecture. The ingress is actually the Envoy prox proxy itself. And same thing with egress, you can route your egress traffic uh, through the Envoy proxy as well, which I'm gonna demo later on. In addition, you also have the Istio control plane, and that's a few things. Um, Istio, Istio D has the certificate authority, so it handles all the certificates that are used for MTLS between services. It pushes the network configuration to your proxies, and it manages your authentication and authorization policy. So there's three big features to Istio. Um, does traffic management. It also manages uh, or has a lot of benefit for doing observability and, and then lastly security, which that's the piece that I'm gonna demo tonight. So what are some of the things you get with Istio in regards to traffic management? Uh, it can do things like uh, request routing or timeouts. It does. Uh, it has the ability to do circuit breakers. So a circuit breaker pattern is say, for example, you have a service in your a microservice that starts misbehaving and maybe it starts throwing errors. Istio can gracefully, gracefully remove that and like restart the service and then gracefully bring that back in uh, to, your, to your cluster. It can do things like traffic mirroring and shifting. So like if you wanted to have a second service stood up and send all the traffic to that service and mirror the traffic and just and for like a read only maybe uh, for testing, you can do that. It handles, it can do fault latency injection. So if you're doing things like, um, um, like testing, uh, load testing, or you're doing chaos engineering, you can inject faults and latency into your application to, to, to see how that behaves. And then lastly, uh, one thing you can do with Istio is it helps enable blue-green deployments or canary deployments. So if you want to do blue-green deployments, you can use Istio to shift traffic between two microservices, version one and version two, or canary deployments with um, either shifting traffic or doing something like traffic mirroring. On the observability side, Istio has like a rich set of, of metrics that it provides. And since all of your network traffic is flows to those proxies, you get a lot of information about how your system is behaving at the network level. It also does tracing, so you can. There's third-party uh, add-ons that you can install. Things like uh, Jaeger that'll allow you to do sampling of um, requests into your system and trace those and figure out where the latency is happening. And then, since you also get a lot of logging capabilities with uh, with Istio, you, you can see access how access is happening inside of your system with access logging. And then lastly, for a security, there's, these are the five things that I'm gonna cover and it's the, the big things for Istio. Um, you can secure ingress and egress. You can secure communications between services. It has the ability to authentication author and authorization. Okay, so before we start the demo part, this is the, the sample uh, application that I'm gonna demo tonight. And this was actually created by Istio. It's their book info demo. And you can see that it has, uh, it's made up of four different microservices. 
So you have like, a, or sorry, four different programming languages. So you have Python, Java, Ruby, and Node. And then for the review service, there's three versions of that that they provide. Uh, there's a V1 version, V2, and V3. And the difference is V1 has no stars on it, and V2 and V3 have different colored stars. So you know which uh, which review service you're hitting. So if you're doing, um, if you're like playing around with their uh, traffic routing, um, and you hit refresh, you know you can have it set the load balance between the three. And I actually in the demo when I show that later, when I refresh the page, you'll see that it'll skip around between the different review services. So they put this demo together multi-language because it highlights one of the benefits of using something like Istio is none of these applications have to worry about networking. It's managed by Istio and Kubernetes. Okay. All right, so a couple of uh, additional things about my setup. Um, I'm running, uh, this demo is gonna be ran on, on, my, on my Mac and I'm using uh, Docker for Mac OS, I'm on the Edge version and that provides Kubernetes 116.5 and I'm gonna be running Istio version 1.5.2. All right, so the first step here that we're gonna do is our initial setup. And I'm just going to verify that the cluster is in a default space and it doesn't have anything running in it. And obviously switching screens did not work, so you can't see the screen that I'm demoing now. All right, so you can see here um, that basically I don't have an Istio namespace installed in my Kubernetes cluster, and there's no resources running in, in the default namespace. And when I try to curl the book info uh, application, it's not running, so I get a uh, connection refused from. We're, we're seeing it cut off again. You're, you're not seeing my screen again? No. I re I show, it, show, it shows in the stream yard. Is it? Let's see. I don't have. Oh yeah, that, there it is. Sorry. That's okay. And let me uh, let me uh, just do one thing here. Let me. Um, of course, it won't let me zoom in. So I apologize for that being a little small. Let's see if I can make text bigger. Is that a little bit better? It's a little bit easier to see, I think. All right, so uh, the next thing that I'm gonna do is I was gonna flip back and forth between the slides, but I'm not gonna be able to do that, is uh, I'm gonna install Istio. Uh, and then after I install Istio, I'm going to enable automatic, automatic sidecar injection in the default namespace. And then I'm gonna install the book info application and I'm gonna serve that over HTTP. So uh, the way that the sidecar injection works with, with Istio is there's several ways you can configure it. You can configure it to inject in all of the namespaces in your cluster. You can uh, set it up to inject just into a certain namespace and even at the workload level, so like at a pod level, you could set Istio to inject into that. And this is gonna take a little bit, it probably takes like 45 seconds to install Istio uh, into a cluster. One of the things that's new in Istio 1.5 is they, they kind of deprecated Helm as their uh, installation method and they moved to Istio control, which was uh, a little bit frustrating for us because we use Helm. And uh, now we have to rethink how we're gonna do the installations, but we'll manage to figure that out. All right, so the installation is complete. I'm gonna pause for just a second here on my script to make sure that everything comes up uh, and is running. And we've installed the book info application. All 
All right, and then last but not least, we installed um, two pieces, the Istio Gateway and the Istio Virtual Service, and I'll talk about those here in just a second. So let me show you what the different resources look like in the cluster. Um, you can see there's my namespace at the top, and you see I've added that label, istio-inject equals enabled, and that's gonna say that everything in the default namespace is going to have uh, the sidecar injected or the Envoy proxy injected. And you'll notice that all of the pods that are running in the default namespace are two of two. So you can see that both the application, the microservice is running in the, and the uh, Istio proxy is running next to it. And here's what the uh, Istio namespace looks like. And that probably scrolled by too fast because I uh, increased the font size. But um, we have the Istio pods. And I just, I just used the demo uh, installation uh, manifest with Istio control. There's several that you can choose from, and you'll probably want to customize that. If I was running this in production, I'd probably want to have more than one of each service so that a node going down wouldn't take out uh, Istio. Um, one of the one advantage of running Istio is the proxies are self-managed when they're up and running. Once the config has been pushed, if they have the correct the current config has been pushed into the Istio proxies. If this stuff goes down in Istio, at least um, like the Istio D uh, pod were to go down, things would continue to run. Now, if the ingress gateway goes down, it might stop your application from running, but that's why you run those in at least two, right? So that uh, if one goes down, the other one can still uh, receive traffic. All right, so I installed, uh, Istio has a bunch of custom resource definitions that it uses. And so two of them, the two of them that we need for this piece is the gateway resource and the virtual service. So the gateway, defines how traffic comes in um, to your cluster and where and basically uh, which ingress gateway it's going to use. So you can see here in my selector, I basically said uh, the, the selector for this gateway is ingress gateway and you'll notice I have a pod up there, uh, istio-ingress gateway and that's the, that's the uh, actual ingress that will use um, book info, that book info gateway traffic will go over. And I've set this for any traffic that comes over this book info.devops.live to go to, um, to flow through this ingress gateway. And then in addition to that, I've added a virtual service. And a virtual service is kind of what it sounds like. I basically defined a service that um, is virtual. And this is where you get, this piece of Istio is what gives you the rich routing capabilities in Istio. And for this, in this case, I basically said that um, any, uh, any traffic that's coming in for bookinfo.devops.live is gonna use this gateway and it's gonna match on these rules. Now these rules, there's a bunch of different ways you can configure this. Um, you can configure this just to be a slash and have all traffic goes, um, you know, to, from, from this host would go to this backend or this destination. Um, this is just from their demo page and this is how they had it set up. So I just copied that. And so at, what I have highlighted here is the destination, and that's basically routing that to a service that exists in the default namespace. So if you're familiar with, with Kubernetes, um, the way DNS works inside of Kubernetes, um, this is just the short name. Um, since it's in the default, it's product page. The actual full name, full DNS is product page dot default dot uh, svc dot cluster dot local. Um, but I only have the short page here. So this means that any traffic that comes in to bookinfo.devops.live on port 80 on the gateway will be redirected to the service running uh, in the default name the product page service on port number 9080. And since my uh, screen flipping isn't working, um, we'll, just, we'll just show the curl piece, which is I was able to curl um, bookinfo.devops.live, the product page, and I got back a successful 200. Now I didn't have this running over uh, HTTPS, so an HTTPS call would fail here. All right, so next, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna basically secure that site with TLS. And you get some flexibility here as well. So there's four or five different modes that Istio supports when it comes to securing your gateways. You can do um, pass through. You can have termination happen at the gateway. You can do mutual TLS if you wanted to. If you wanted a client to present a, present a certificate to be able to um, to log in, it supports all of those. So you can see here that I've added a secret to Kubernetes uh, the in the Istio system namespace. 
And I basically have modified my gateway now. Um, you can see this down here. My gateway now has some a TLS section. And I did one other thing when I, when I set up my Istio cluster initially, I enabled service secret discovery service. And the way that works with Istio is it adds some, an agent that runs alongside the Ingress gateway. And that Ingress and basically monitors a secrets, uh, a secret that's defined for the gateway. And if this were to change, like say I was to go in and upload a new certificate to the secret, the secret discovery service would automatically pick that up and it would re it would without having a restart of your Ingress gateway, it would reconfigure it to use the, to serve the new cert. So there's no downtime if you were to change certificates. And you can see here at the bottom, I curled um, the bookinfo.devops.live product page and I got back a successful 200. I don't have this set up for the demo. You can also set this gate. I could set this up to do an automatic redirect. So if you want to redirect HTTP traffic to HTTPS, it can handle that as well. Okay. So the next um, thing to show is how do you secure communication between services? So we're going to set up MTLS um, by default. Uh, so what I'm going to do for this step, since I can't show you the screen, is I'm going to enable uh, strict MTLS. And uh, that's not enabled by default in a cluster. Uh, MTLS is enabled by default, but it's not set to strict mode. And the, the way that works if it's not set to strict mode is it just allows mixed traffic. So things that are not, um, that are not, in, that are not running on the Istio um, service mesh can talk to things that are. Um, but if you want to lock that down, you probably want it to run a strict. And so what that will do is it'll reject any traffic that's not, that's not running inside of the, inside of the cluster and that's not uh, using MTLS. This can be set, like I said before, like the Istio can be set at the, at the namespace, uh, cluster and pod level, the same thing for MTLS. You can just enable or, de or disable it at any of those three levels. All right, so what I'm gonna do for this step is I'm going to install this little simple uh, container uh, or service into my into my cluster, which is called the sleep service, and it just has curl installed on the container, so it allows me to run curl commands. And you'll see in my default namespace, I will have a new uh, a new pod running, which is the sleep pod. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enable peer authentication, and I'll show you what that looks like here in a minute. So peer authentication is basically saying that I'm going to set my MTLS mode to strict. And I have not specified any sort of uh, constraints on that. So that's going to apply to the entire cluster. And so you can see here, I am able to sleep. I'm able to run curl um, from that sleep container. And I get back a 200 when I curl the product page. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to install that same application into a namespace that's not controlled by Istio. It's called the not Istio namespace. And we're gonna try to run curl again. And I'm gonna show you that when you run curl outside of the stuff that's controlled by Istio, Istio won't allow that traffic into the, into the container. It'll block it. So you can see here when I run this, I'm gonna get an error back from curl. It's gonna be a, I think a 35 back from curl. Uh, 56, got my error codes mixed up. So the benefit of, so this is really great. Like you can just flip this on and it just works. It's going to work for most of your, if you're work for your, of your workloads. And in our case, we flipped this on. We had, I think we had problems with maybe one thing. I think it might've been Prometheus. That's one of the Prometheus exporters may have had some issues with it, but it just worked otherwise. We had no issues with this. Um, it's just, it's all transparent. And now you've secured, um, you've secured all of your microservices with MTLS. Okay, so the next step is we're gonna set up some end-user authentication using Istio. So let me talk about what, what that means while it, it works. So Istio supports uh, JSON web tokens for doing authentication. Now with Istio out of the box, one thing it doesn't handle is the entire, the entire workflow for if you were gonna do OIDC or OAuth, it does not support that. So you'll have to actually have some piece that'll do like the call out to your OIDC or OAuth provider and, and come back into the cluster and, you know, put the, um, 
the bear token on your on your request. There is a product that does exist that's uh, that somebody from IBM Cloud wrote. It's called App Identity and Access Adapter, and that basically does what I just described that Istio does not do, and it does that full workflow. And it has a rich, um, it uses similar policy as like Istio does, so you can lock down all of your cluster without having to run anything necessarily, uh, like some third party, or sorry, not have to write your own. That's really the benefit here, right, is we don't want to write these things. We want somebody else to write them and manage them, and we just want to use them. So what I've done here is uh, for my uh, request authentication is basically Istio has a testing token um, that they that they provide on their GitHub. And so I basically set up uh, this request authentication to say, like, the issue is going to be the Istio, the testing at secure.istio.io, and you can go to validate it at this uh, URL or URI. And then uh, I've added an authorization policy, which basically says, um, if it does not have a valid token on it, then I want to deny that traffic. So anything that the anything coming into the cluster if it does not have a valid token, it's going to deny it. So if I try to hit the site now without um, using a, a web token, what I end up getting is a 403, so it's not authorized. If I pass it a authorization um, header that's invalid, I get back a 403. And if I actually use a valid token, um, I should get back a 200 error or a 200 response. So I was, I was going to try to do the app and access identity stuff uh, for this demo, but I just did not have time to get that all worked out. All right, so moving on, we've done, um, we've done some authentication now. And let's add, uh, let's add authorization into um, the mix here. So I'm going to add an, a, a second authorization policy to the, uh, in addition to the first one that I already have. And this is what it looks like now. So I have a, so I have down here at the bottom, I have my original deny statement, but I've added an allow statement. And basically what this allow statement says is when the request comes from, if the request has um, a principle of testing at secure.istio.io slash testing at secure.istio.io, and when it has a request.auth.claims group of group one, then I'm going to allow that request in. If it does not have that, even if it has a valid uh, token, I'm going to reject that traffic. So with the authorization policy, there's a lot you can do with it. Um, you can do routing on the from. So the from can do things like it can support um, routing paths. It can also support methods. So you could say, um, I want to do um, a, uh, or sorry, the two side. So I want to say from, I have to have a token, and two, uh, when I do a put request. So maybe you have a get method that doesn't doesn't require a token, but you have put methods that do. So you get a lot of flexibility. All the all the like the routing stuff is pretty much spread throughout all the different parts of this deal, and it's it really makes uh, for a powerful tool. In addition, um, if you have TCP services that talk to one another, you can use the same policy to specify that like I only want service A to talk to service B over TCP on a specific port and it'll lock that down for you. And as I'm showing here, the JSON web tokens, it supports things like claims. Um, in addition, the authorization policy can do things like request headers. So you, can, you could say like, I need to have a specific request header, uh, source IPs, if the source IP doesn't match, it can reject and even, even namespace. So it only allow traffic in certain namespaces inside of the cluster. All right, so next I'm gonna basically hit it with an invalid, uh, that same token but from before, that does, but it doesn't have the groups or the uh, principle on it. And you see that returns a 403. And so now I've hit um, the application with a valid token. So you can see that I have the, the ISS is set to that testing at secure.sto.io. And I've set a scope of scope, uh, sorry, I've set a group of group one and group two. And when I curl with that, with that token that has these, um, these parameters, I get back at 200 successfully. All right, so next we're going to talk about egress, egress from the cluster. So there's a couple of different ways you can set up egress in your cluster with Istio. 
Um, Istio has two different um, ways you can you can set Istio. It can either be set to permissive mode, just like MTLS permissive, where it allows all traffic out of the cluster, or you can set it to strict, where it blocks all traffic by default out of your cluster. So when I installed my Istio, uh, when I installed Istio initially, I locked it down. I did not, I did not allow it to be permissive for this for this demo. And so, um, and then, then then when you lock it down, there's two different ways you can actually have Istio handle that. One way is you can set it to route all traffic through an actual egress gateway in Istio, and there's some things you can do with that egress gateway. Or you can tell Istio just to allow traffic out from source from wherever that. Like so, if I have a pod running and it goes out, it just goes directly out from that from that uh, envoy proxy and doesn't route through an egress um, controller. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that if I try to curl out to uh, Google here, it's going to fail because I've locked down egress in my cluster, and I'm going to get back in errors. I think it's like 36 or 37, 35 maybe. Yeah, 35. And so I don't have anything set up to allow. Um, traffic to go out. Got a quick question here. Sure. Um, did I do do uh, RBAC stuff on authentication? Uh, can you can you clarify like what you mean by like like, like using RBAC for authentication inside of the cluster or outside of the cluster? Okay. Well, he does that. You could go ahead. I'll I'll bring it up in a minute. Okay. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add an egress gateway to my cluster. And then I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a, I'm gonna add a couple other things too. So there's an egress gateway, a service entry, um, a destination rule and a virtual service. So those four pieces. And I'm gonna explain what each of those kind of do. Okay, so, so inside the cluster uh, that I set up uh, RBAC. So, I'm using whatever whatever the default settings are for Istio, and I believe that it turns on RBAC for the Istio components. Is that is that what you're referring to? Okay. All right. So let's go. Okay. So let's go by these one by one. So the first thing is the egress gateway. And this works in a similar way to the ingress gateway. And I basically specified a selector. I don't, I'm not showing the pods here, but um, this egress gateway basically says all traffic for any host would go through this egress gateway. So the great thing about this, and I forgot to mention this with the ingress gateway. Um, ingress gateways, there's, they're really flexible in the way you can figure them just like egress gateways. And so in this example, I could have multiple egress gateways. Let's say I needed to have some traffic that goes, that's routed internally into like a data center or some other internal, you know, like maybe to another internal VPC in AWS. I can have two of these and I can have one that routes traffic through certain subnets or through a certain uh, routes uh, out to the public internet. And I can have internal traffic be routed through a different uh, egress gateway and maybe in a different set of subnets with a different set of routing rules. In the same way with the ingress, you can do that. You can have multiples in for even for a in the same namespace. That's kind of difficult to do with like an ingress and Kubernetes. It's a little bit more challenging to set up. So as an example, what we do is we have stuff that we only want to be accessed internally in our cluster, right? So like you have monitoring tools and, and other things, you don't want the, to expose those to the public internet. So we have one, uh, one ingress gateway that's set up to run uh, that stuff. And then we have a second ingress gateway that's set up to, to serve the actual uh, website. And they're really flexible, so you could you could do one if you needed to. You could have one could run as an elastic load balancer for running in the cloud, like at ABS, um, and the other one could be a network load balancer. So you get you get it's very flexible in how that that approach works, and it's useful if you're running like you know like a bunch of different websites all on you know one Kubernetes cluster out of one namespace, for example. Like maybe you're doing white label stuff. Just go ahead, take one more question, and then we'll leave the rest to the end here. Okay. Oh, that's. I know this person. Um, so Istio control is the uh, the recommended route moving forward. I think they they said something about maybe reintroducing a new Helm chart 
that works with Istio Control, but I haven't I haven't looked at that yet. Um, after playing around with the demo, so we, like I said before, we use we use Helm today, and I playing around with the demo, it kind of got me familiar with Istio Control, and it's it's nice. It works in a very similar way to Helm would work. So you have a YAML file, and you can do you can do overrides much like Helm does. So I, I would say that's probably one way to manage that moving forward is to um, whatever tool you're using to manage, um, you know, manage your installation of your applications a day. I would look at the Istio control piece as being the, as the first thing. Maybe you call shell script um, to run to handle the installation, or you base, or you could even I think you have the ability with Istio. You could just generate it'll generate all of the uh, manifests, so all the YAML files. So you can do that offline and then install those manually using the using the apply command with uh, cube control. That was a good question, though. Okay, so back to the Eagers Gateway. So this Eagers Gateway, I'm saying any traffic is allowed out on this Eagers Gateway. I'm not restricting that, and I'm restricting it. I am restricting it to a port um, 443, and it's going to be TLS. And the mode that I've set here is pass through. So there's a Several different ways you can handle egress uh, gateways with the TLS. You can do pass through, which basically the egress gateway doesn't do anything with your TLS traffic going out. It also supports TLS or, uh, origination. So you could originate all of your T TLS from your egress gateway. It does support wildcards. As you see here, I have a wildcard host. And it even supports doing an external proxy. So if you need to have, if you already, if you like, you have a business that already has a proxy that you route all of your HTTPS traffic through, you can use that with Istio and it'll work. So what are the other pieces that I have to have to, um, to get this traffic to go out? So the one piece that you have to have, irregardless of, of having traffic route through your egress gateway, or if you don't have the egress gateway enabled and you just allow traffic to go out through the proxy directly, you have to define a service entry. So service entries define things that are external to the cluster and bring them into the cluster so that it knows about it. And each thing that you want to connect to externally has to have a service entry. Now you can do wildcard on the host. I don't think you can wildcard all hosts, which doesn't make sense because you'd probably just want to turn it off at that point if you wanted to wildcard all of your hosts. But you can wildcard. So like example, if I needed a wildcard um, like Wikipedia or something, I could do a start on wikipedia.com and it would work for that. And so this defines that if I want to make a request out to www.google.com, um, uh, over 443, then it will allow that. The proxy will now allow that. And so the virtual service and the destination rule are things that you need if you enable that egress gateway and you force your traffic through the egress gateway. So in this case, I have a virtual service that basically just defines um, the same thing that my service entry defined. It defines uh, google.com. And it says that um, when it matches, it's going to match it up with the gateway. Um, it's Sorry, it's going to match in the mesh. And it validates that I have a, it's using the SNI host to match on. And then the destination is down here. And that's basically going to send that traffic to the Eagers gateway. So my SEO dash Eagers gateway. And that's going to match um, to that gateway on that port with that SNI host. And the destination is going to be google.com. And then so you can do some other things with virtual services like um, like you can wait these and you can have multiple routes and you can do load balance and that sort of thing, but you don't need that for the, we don't need that for this egress example. And then the destination rule basically ties those things together. It ties the virtual service um, to your egress gateway. So you can see here that it's basically saying that um, this destination rule, um, any any host that's basically this Istio egress gateway is, or sorry, any subset. So this name Google applies to this um, to the service. And so you can see up here that my service entry was named Google, and that's what it's selecting on. So it's basically saying that this service entry is going to flow through this, basically this service here. I know that's kind of conf that's it's a little bit complicated, and it is definitely confusing. Um, and you might scratch your head at like you know like none of it doesn't really make sense. So I'd recommend go reading the documentation on destination rules um, to see how that all fits together. Because that's the one piece in my mind that still is a little, I'm a little confused about it. Every time I look at one, I have, to, I have to go look it up. Okay, so let's, let's, uh, let's show what that looks like. So now I should be able to successfully curl from um, my sleep container that's running on the default namespace out to Google.
And you'll see here that I should get back a successful uh, 200. Now I also want to show this. So what happens if I egress from outside of the cluster? So if I egress from, um, oh, sorry, I'm going to show the traffic first. So you can see that I have a log entry in the Egress Gateway that shows that I've made a request outbound to www.google.com. And then lastly, what happens if I run curl outside of the Istio namespace? So that container that's running in the not Istio namespace. So that gets a 200 as well. So Istio doesn't can't block traffic that it doesn't know about. So how do you lock down traffic that isn't maybe not running on the cluster? So let's say somebody was to maliciously create a container running in a namespace that's not controlled by Istio, how would you lock that down? Well, there is a, there is a something you can do about that. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna talk about is uh, network policies. So this is what a network policy looks like. And you can see here, what I basically said is I'm, I've given it two rules. The first rule is saying, I wanna allow egress, but I only wanna allow egress out through the cube system namespace. So I'm only gonna allow pods in any, any, any namespace in my cluster, they should only be able to talk out to, um, on their own to the cube system namespace. Over, and that's for port 53. So that's basically allows them to make queries to get DNS, right? And then I wanna also allow them to egress to the Istio system namespace so that they can communicate to the egress gateway. So if this rule was set up in my cluster, that would block all the traffic. Now, unfortunately, there's some additional things that you need in order for network policy to work. Network policy doesn't work by itself. You have to have a um, container networking interface that supports network policy. Unfortunately, for the, for the Mac, for, with Docker for Mac, Kubernetes does not allow you to install a CNI. Um, so I couldn't add one to see what that looks like. So I can't actually demo that this locks things down. Now, what I would recommend is, if you're interested in this kind of security, that you look at something like Calico. So there's, there's the CNI, like, sorry, to go to step back a second. So like the CNI for AWS supports network policy, and that, this will work in AWS. And it'll probably work in all the different cloud providers. I'm sure there's CNI support as well. Now, there's some additional CNIs. There's, there's some other ones. There's like a Weave, and Calico has a CNI. What I would recommend is if you're really interested in doing network policy, you should go look at Calico. You don't have to use their, um, you don't have to use their, their CNI to actually do the network policy stuff, but they have a bunch of CRDs um, that give you like an Istio-like feel to doing network policy. They have a really rich set of uh, controls that you allow you to, to, to lock down your network inside of Kubernetes, much more so than what just the network policy gives you. All right, so that is it for the demo. Now I'm gonna switch screens back here. And of course I'm on the, there we go. Now let me, hold on a second, let me fix the streaming. All right, so that's what I have today. So I'm ready to take questions if people have questions. Okay, thank you, Aaron. Let's see, let's see if anybody has any burning questions here. Any anything they want to ask? Give it a few minutes here. Um. So while well, people are coming up with questions, so um, you can find me on the Kubernetes. Like I'm, I'm. I love to give back, right? That's the reason why I do these talks. That's the reason why I do some other talks for like high schoolers and stuff. I love to help other people. So reach out to me on Kubernetes, on the Slack for Kubernetes if you want. Um, look me up if you have questions about Istio or just things about Kubernetes in general. I'm, I'm more than happy to help as much as I can. Um, also, if you go to my GitHub, I have a repo called Presentations where I put all of my presentations. So if you wanna look at those, this, this presentation is there as well. I put it up last night. And all this, the the slides are there, and all the stuff that I use for the demo is there. If you want to look at the scripts that I that I wrote for that, you can, or send me an email. Awesome. Uh, 
Elo's wage is um, I'm happy to help if I can. That's that's the only reason to do this is to help others um, uh, have a successful journey with whatever technology they're using. That is one of the values of DevOps, sharing. Yes. <laughs> And uh, yeah, you could also find Aaron on our uh, DevOps Days Slack channel. Um, if you need uh, how to get to it, we could you could always share it out and provide it on the Meetup page. How to get to the the DevOps Days DFW Slack channel, where most uh, we have presenters there and everything. So let's see. I don't see any questions coming up right now. So, like, I have a question for people that are watching. How many people are using Kubernetes today? Is there anybody that, that's at this talk that's using Kubernetes and maybe looking at using Istio? That's a question, good question. And and if, if so, you know, how many of them are using it in production or in, in what kind of environment are they using it? So I'll speak for us. We've been – so we switched all of our – we moved to, uh, to Kubernetes the day that it went GA at AWS. So the okay. day they GA Kubernetes, we were like, yes, we're, we we wanted to move there, but we didn't want to manage it ourselves because managing a cluster yourself, you know, I've heard that it's uh, can be can be challenging for a small team, and so we were like, well, let's put the burden on AWS to manage that. All right, so somebody else that's using K in production, that's good. Are you looking at using Istio um, to secure your application? If I'm not mistaken, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, Nguyen is from IBM, so. Oh, okay, okay. Well, yeah. So, like, they're the guys that wrote IBM Clouds. The guys that wrote the provider, um, that uh, that app, app identity provider. Um, and then we we've been we've been using Istio since Istio hit 1.0, which has been a ride. Um, I'll, I'll say that it's gotten better. It was a little shaky when they when 1.0 um, first came out, but it's gotten it's definitely gotten better. What was that? What was that product you used from IBM? Uh, it's uh, the name of it is I think it's app and identity. There's a blog post. Um, let me find this this slide. If you I can have. find that blog post and put it on the on the Meetup channel. Uh, so the name of it is, is app identity and access adapter. That's the name of the uh, the uh, add-on for Kubernetes that they uh, somebody developed uh, at IBM. App identity. All right, so we got a question. Uh, are there any limitations currently with using Istio in a production environment? Uh, I would say, so like I said before, we've been running it. It, it went hit 1.0 and went into GA the beginning of last year. And our experience has been positive with it. When, when you get things configured properly, um, it just works. So configuration, we've had challenges when we make changes to a cluster, and I wouldn't recommend, I'd recommend having like a test cluster to make the changes, obviously. But once we get the pattern figured out for the Helm chart, uh, for the Helm charts that we use, it, it, it just works. Like we don't, we've never had issues. It's just funny because uh, there's a developer that every time there's a problem um, with like a networking problem, he's like, oh, well maybe it's Istio. And it hasn't been Istio yet. Now I'm gonna knock on wood because the next problem we have is probably gonna be Istio, but uh, it's usually not Istio. So Istio is not broken in that regard. It was, it's, you know, still a relatively young product, I would say. And we have had issues like when we've upgraded, we've ran into some problems with upgrades. Uh, most recently, when we tried to upgrade from 1.2 to 1.3, we ran into some issues where it just didn't work. I would say like, it's it's not a bad product. Uh, I would evaluate it. And you know, if it's just, you know, the right thing for your own organization based on how much risk you're willing to tolerate. Um, and I think it's only gonna get better as, as time goes on. So that would be my only concern um, with running it in production is, is that. So do you have any criteria to select Istio over LinkedIn? Um, that's I probably should have looked, did some research before I came to this talk because I, I thought somebody might ask that question. So we evaluated <laughs> when we evaluated Istio was you know it was a long time ago. It was like a year, you know, 18 months ago, whatever, more than that actually, probably almost two years ago, when Istio was like just some blog posts and maybe there was like a like a really early beta version. I like the flexibility and power that Istio brings to the cluster. So that was the that was the one thing that I liked. There was two pieces. One, I like that the the proxy, uh, I like the whole proxy idea. And I like the fact that the proxy was developed by Lyft, somebody that's obviously does um, they have they have a website that probably sees a, quite a bit of traffic, 
So you know that that's going to be high performance and it's going to perform well. Now we don't, we don't, none of our stuff is really high performance. We don't have like nearly the size that Lyft does. So that was one, one thing that I really liked, but I really liked the, the model that they were building um, and the patterns that they were building. I thought that, and I just, in, in my mind, that that was a, a really not going to be a really nice product once it, once it matured. So I don't really have a lot of experience with Linkerd. Um, and I, it looks like my screen maybe. Yeah, 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 I bring yeah, it, but you can bring it up, you know. Oh, it's probably because I switched. Um, so that's, yeah, that's really all I can say about, like, the Linkerd. I know it's not it's not as powerful, um, but it's it's been around a little bit longer, I believe, and it's probably, probably a little bit more mature than Istio is. Okay. Let's see if we have any more questions. I know we got like 15 people on the call here. So if you have any more questions, bring them on. Hey, you're welcome. Here's another one. Yeah, so not, not really Istio related, but yes, we um, we use a combination of Terraform and Helm to deploy our applications on the Kubernetes. And we're actually looking at moving away from, possibly moving away from both of those. Uh, That's interesting. Uh, we, I, don't get me wrong, I love Helm, I love Terraform. If I, if I had a second jacket, it would be a, te uh, a Terraform jacket. Um, but uh, I love it for infrastructure, it's great. But there's some problems with doing it with, there's some challenges with using the Helm provider and uh, with Terraform. And uh, Helm- Is it a combination of both? It's, well, okay. So I have to kind of explain how, like in our case, we don't have like one Kubernetes cluster. We have like 20, okay? So we have a cluster per customer that we, that we sell to. And it's, it's the challenge is, um, twofold. One, when you do deployments with Helm and a bunch of microservices, now you have a, a this monolith. So with Helm and Terraform, you can't really say like, I only want to deploy microservice A because if you have changes to both, they're going to go out, right? If the, gotcha. the two things have changed, so you lose that flexibility. And with Helm, it's it's been it's a decent tool, but it just doesn't like my my criticism is really like that the templates are a little bit difficult to do, and um, the pattern they use like a go they use um it's written in go and they use they use some um, go templating and that doesn't really equate very much to uh to helm or to, to yaml in general so there's some other tools out there I've, I've been looking at capitan so we have this big project coming up to maybe do some refactoring that and so like using something like json it or capitan where you can build a, a much more robust um uh, more set of YAML files yeah, and they have to all, and all of us have to be tweaked just a little bit, right? And so Helm ends up being like this giant file with a bunch of if statements, like if you enable this and if you enable that, and that's really where I think it's not a very good pattern. I think if you're doing like most, 90% of your stuff is off the shelf, like you're installing like Prometheus and FileBeats and you want to just use the Helm charts, those are, that's great for that. Um, or, and you don't have, you know, a bunch of clusters too. Gotcha. So how would, I, how would you go about getting started with Istio? So I would, go, they, like my demo, I would not be successful without all the work that Istio did. Um, if you go look at their pages, they have a whole list of tasks you can do, and most of my demo came straight from that. Like I just took what they've done to show like the different uh, different uh, concepts. So that's what I would do is if you have a, the ability to run a cluster locally, it's simple, easy to install, and then you can run through those tasks with their book info app to kind of get an idea of how um, uh, how things work. Yeah, like like he said, Istio.io is the, the place I would start. Um, and then just look at their documentation. So their documentation, you you say, would be pretty straight on. I would say it's, yeah, for the, as complicated as Istio is, all the different pieces that it has, their their documentation is actually really good. Okay. I would like it would be a nightmare to set it up if they didn't have decent documentation. Gotcha. And and most of it's up to date, so that's even even better. There's not a lot of stuff on there that's like really out of like their blog post might be out of date, but they. They'll tell you that at the top of the page, like, hey, this you know, why, but yeah, the yeah. good thing is that it's it's all open source and community driven. That's true. 
So that's great. That's great. Okay. Looks like we're coming up on the hour. I don't know if anybody has any more burning questions. Um, for everybody that's still on, uh, I just want to remind you we're having these meetups every two weeks. Uh, next week, we're going to have a real live one because we have the uh, Kelsey Hightower from Google. And uh, he's, you know, if you have any burning questions for Kelsey, bring him on. He'll, he'll take them all on. I really hope he's doing a demo. I, I like to think that my demos are, are good, but they're nowhere near a Kelsey Hightower demo. Yeah, I got, his, I got some work to do. His demos are good, but I, I think he, because of the time constraints, since he's doing so many, um, he's going to be doing a lot of, uh, it's just like more Q&A, ask questions, and, you know, so he could talk about different things. Um, he does, I, I've seen him live several times. He does great demos. Yeah, yeah. I'm just glad I got to go before him and not afterwards. Nobody wanted to come <laughs> after that. Like, oh, I don't need to go. <laughs> Yeah, definite, definite. Yeah. Well, hopefully you learned something about a network about the network policy stuff. Yeah, I mean, if if not, if anybody has any more questions about network policy about Istio, you know, just post them in the in the meetup, and you know, I'm always monitoring the meetups. So if anybody has any questions, I'll I'll get notified. And uh, and I'll pass them on to Aaron if if we need to get some questions from him answered. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'm on LinkedIn or Twitter. I don't really Twitter, so don't don't reach out to me. On Twitter, <laughs> I'll be not answer. <laughs> yeah, you can reach out on me on Twitter. I I'm get my direct messages are open. And, you know, if anybody has any questions, pass them on to me. I'll. I'll get them. I'll get them to the right place. Get them to Aaron. Get them to whoever needs to answer them. But yeah, yeah, we'll we'll get them. You know, you get them to us. We'll we'll get them answered one way or another. We'll figure out a way. Let's see if we got any more. Anybody else asking any more questions? And I'm glad. I'm glad Nguyen joined us on Facebook. He he was the only one on Facebook that joined us, and uh, everybody else is coming through YouTube. So it's it's great to see the interface is getting shared out correctly, and and everything's working on on both uh, platforms. So it's a great venue. Okay, well I appreciate everybody showing up. And uh, hold on a second. Nope, that's not on my. Oh, yeah. I guess he's not on, on. I thought he was on on the Facebook, but I guess not. Like well, showing up here as Facebook on there. So, but anyway, I appreciate everybody showing up, and uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks with Kelsey Hightower. And I want to thank Aaron for for showing up and presenting this. I'm sure that if he has any other hot topic, he'll reach out to me, and we'll we'll get him presented on here as well. Yeah, I want to just thank you for having me. It's, it was fun. Hey, I, I it's, it's a pleasure. Together. Yeah. It's a pleasure. Thank you. You have a good evening. Take care.